This is Professor Stugard, and in this video, we're going to talk about some more advanced visualizations we can do in the R programming language, um, and how we can really select for additional variables. So our goal for this particular uh, lecture is to learn how we can plot multiple variables at once, how we understand our aesthetics and our keys as different filters for our variables, and then lastly, how we can use facets to make multiple plots at once, again, based upon additional variables. So the idea here is, again, that I want to filter my variables because many data sets are going to have observations that have, well, many different variables associated with them. Um, it's very, very rare that we're going to find a data set that literally only has like two columns. Usually there's lots more columns. There's many more variables and we can sometimes um, well, we want to see if those variables play a role or affect what our data is going to look like as well. So the example we're going to use here at the beginning is let's say I have a data set on student athletes and it includes a whole bunch of different variables like their age, their gender, their height, their weight, um, those sorts of things. Now, in this case, I just have four different variables, but all right, what's going to be the important ones that I want to graph or try to investigate with my graphing? Well, with bivariate data, I'm only going to be able to choose two at a time. But maybe I want to see if there's a difference looking at more than just two of them at a time. Well, that's going to require some filtering, which is going to require a key. And what we're going to be doing is going to have to therefore go inside of my aesthetic function. So let's just jump in with an example um, and hopefully it'll make more sense as we go. So again, I have my data frame, my data set called athletes and it contains all that data we just talked about. Um, and I wanna see if uh, how their height uh, looks when I graph it against their age. But I also, well, think there's probably a difference between men and women, right? Males and females, their heights might be different based on their age, right? So I wanna select for that so that I'm not just looking at a bunch of raw data, I wanna be able to see the difference between the men and the women. So again, my data frame is athletes. I'm piping that into my ggplot function. Uh, I am choosing my x-axis as their age in years. And again, just be really careful, right? It's gotta be the exact title of the column. Um, and in this case, um, they're using the camel method to define their column. So it's lowercase age and then the uppercase y for year. And then my y-axis is gonna be their height in inches. And then again, that's how uh, that column is named there. Now. I want to, again, like I said, I'm looking at their age along the horizontal. I'm looking at their height along the vertical. But again, I think there might be a difference between men and women. So I'm going to change the color of the point depending upon their sex. All right, it's going to select their sex. And if it's a man, it'll be one color. And if a woman, they'll be a different color. And I'm going to use my uh, obviously scatter plot function there as well. So plus geom point. Now again, notice, because this is a variable that matters, right, that I'm selecting against, it has to be inside my aesthetic function. It's inside that AES function. Um, and again, take a look at the parentheses, make sure they match, right, an open one with the closed one. And again, I'm going to select this by color, and color is going to be determined by the variable sex, which is uh, one of the columns in my, um, in my, data set. So one of my columns in my data set is called sex. It's either male or female. Um, and so we're going to separate the color that way. So when I run that code, well, here we go. We can see that uh, by default, it picked um, the females as kind of a pinkish red, the males as a kind of a light blue or so. But again, we can see age is along the horizontal, the height is along the vertical, it's just now that every point we plot, we're choosing one more variable to take a look at. And again, just visually looking at this, ah, I can clearly see that the tallest men are definitely taller than women at pretty much every age on this, on this, uh, in this set of data. Um, but again, I can select by uh, sex and change the color. Now, if I wanted to, um, it doesn't have to be by color. I can change it by shape. So again, I'm going to separate by uh, the person's sex or gender. Um, the column's called sex. So I'm going to say that the shape is now changed by sex. Again, it's still inside the aesthetic 
All right, I'm still having the age along my x-axis, their height along the y-axis, but now I'm separating by shape and ah, it shows females as being circles and males as being triangles. And again, we can see the data points plotted that way as well. So you, again, you can separate your filters by colors or by shapes, or if you want, you can do both. Um, I can filter, uh, again, the shape um, equals sex, color equals sex, again, all inside of my aesthetic. And now, um, again, females will be the kind of reddish pink circles, males will be the uh, bluish triangles. And so there's even more differentiation there between the type, different types of points. All right. Now, the nice part is I don't just have to pick one particular way that I want to filter this. So let's say I also want to filter by the weight group. So again, in this particular data set, it either groups the athletes, uh, again, it has their weights, but it also groups them as either being 100 pounds or over 100 pounds or 100 pounds and, and under. And so you can see here that again, I chose inside my aesthetic function, the shape will still be changed by the sex. But in this case, my fill is going to be done by the weight group. Um, again, depending on what side of 100 pounds you, they are on. And so I'm now selecting two different variables as my filter. So uh, now my plot is going to show me what's going on with four different variables at the same time. Again, horizontal is still age, vertical is still height, but now my actual points of my scatter plot, the shape will be determined by the sex or the gender of the person, and then the fill is going to be uh, dependent upon the weight group. So if we take a look, um, we can see that the weight group, if they are under 100 pounds, it is a gray fill in. If they are 100 pounds or over, it's completely filled in. And then the sex is determined by the different shapes. So again, circles for females and triangles for males. Um, and again, our knew that since we are using a fill as one of my filters, we have got to pick shapes that are, well, able to be filled in. So again, now we have four different types of shapes on the graph and I can look at those, um, uh, kind of separate all those variables that way as well. All right, so again, that is a kind of a, um, kind of a simple example, but what happens if there's lots of different options for a variable? So again, each of those options for variable um, in this particular data set only had two options, right? Uh, the student was either male or female, uh, and then the weight, the weight group was either less than 100 or 100 and over. Um, but that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes there's, may, there's many, many more categories. So again, if, it, if the, the variable was animal or something, um, or even dog breed, well, there's hundreds of different species and, and even dozens of different dog breeds, it would get a little hairy to have to pick 12, you know, or dozens of different colors or dozens of different shapes for that particular variable. In those cases, what we would want to do instead is do what's called a facet or, or with facets. So with facets, what we're going to do is actually make a bunch of different graphs at once that separate for that one particular variable. Or I can actually select two addition vari additional variables if I do it as a grid. So this facet grid and facet wrap. Um, and again, we choose our variables that we want to filter by, and instead of putting it all in the same graphic, we're gonna see multiple graphics uh, to see each separated and kind of see each category by itself. So again, let's talk about an example here. So I have a data set now, so a different data set that's about fuel efficiency of different vehicles. And I wanna see if there is a relationship between the engine displacement, right? Typically how many liters the engine is, right? Whenever you see those commercials, how many liters and, and you know, whatever. Um, but I also want to care about the, the highway miles per gallon, right? The mileage that they get, right? How many, how, what's the mileage, uh, driving on the highway, but it might not make sense to compare different types of vehicles, right? Comparing a, a two door sedan to a pickup truck might not make a ton of sense, but there's lots of different vehicles, right? There's vans and sedans and a whole bunch of other ones. Well, all right. I don't want to necessarily plot all those on the same graph. What I'm going to do now is use my facets. And so I'm going to, again, pipe in my data set, which is called miles per gallon. I'm gonna pipe it into ggplot. My aesthetics now, my x-axis is the dis 
displacement, the engine displacement. My y-axis is the highway miles per gallon. And again, I have to use the exact names of those columns. And I'm closing that up. That's, that's what I want for my x-axis and my y-axis. And when I'm going to add my layers now, I'm going to add plus geom point, because again, I want this as a scatter plot. So I need that as well, right? I need to, to define what my plots are going to look like. And then I'm going to add plus facet wrap. And facet wrap, again, it's a function. So we have our parentheses. And I'm going to do it by the different classes of vehicles. And so you're going to have to use uh, the squiggly tilde. Uh, and then again, what that that third variable is that we are looking at to do a facet wrap. And when I run my code, here we go. Now I have a separate graph for two-seater cars, compact cars, mid-size cars, minivans, pickups, subcompact, and SUVs. And then each one of these plots has that same x and y axis. The y axis is the highway miles per gallon. And again, you can see 20, 30, 40. And then you also have along your horizontal axis, the displacement in liters, like two liters, three liter, four liter, right? And, and so on. And so you can cl hopefully clearly see all the different cars and it's not too confusing. And you could pick one to start investigating more in depth as opposed to the other. Um, but again, that lets us separate and filter for additional variables here. So, like I said, in this case, there were seven categories for the different types of vehicles. Again, if I wanted to put that all in one graph, even with just seven different categories, I would need seven different colors or seven different shapes, and it would really start to look crowded and not so good, right? You want your data to be understandable. You want someone to be able to just look at it and know what's going on immediately. And again, if you have seven different colors or seven different shapes, that's just not going to be the best way to have people understand what it is you're even talking about. And again, that's where the facet function comes in handy. Uh, you can make multiple graphs at once. You can do a bunch of all the customizations on the facets as well. Um, again, typically the facets are used more as a data scientist type tool towards looking to see if there are patterns based on a uh, particular variable. If we separate or filter for one variable, does anything just jump out at us when we do a facet? grid or a facet wrap um, and and does that give us a starting point to do a more in-depth analysis on on that one particular value for that variable all right so wrapping it up there was not too much to talk about in this particular video and again like i said play around with it find some data sets use your textbook your textbook has all these in there you can copy and paste directly from your textbook it uses public packages that you can load right into our studio Play around with it yourself, do other things yourself, do all the homework exercises in your book as well. Uh, but the two questions, if I wanted to filter our bivariate data based on just one additional variable, how would I do this if I wanted that one additional variable to still all be done in one single plot? Where would I, how would I do that? Now, what if I wanted to filter my bivariate data based on an additional variable, but instead of just doing it all in one plot, I wanted to do it across multiple plots. How would I do that? All right. Those are the two questions you should be able to walk away from this lecture um, with the answer to. And if not, go back, rewatch it, take another look. And as always, take care of yourselves.